We're in a series on building a stronger faith, and we're looking at all these metaphors that the Bible has and the faith life has about how uh, building a strong faith is like building a strong body. We work out our spiritual muscles. We, uh, last week I threw out a challenge. Anyone wanted to do a push-up contest? Uh, no one took me up on that, but Will is over there, and I think he could beat me pretty bad at a push-up contest. Um, so we're going to learn about how to work these spiritual muscles, how to exercise our love, how to lose that weight of guilt and shame that holds us back. You know, a couple of years ago, there was someone in this church who was exercising their body, lost 100 pounds. 100 pounds. Some of you don't even weigh 100 pounds. Some, another Amy over there has been working out with a bunch of neighbors, uh, takes serious commitment. She joined a, a group with personal trainer and, and the right kinds of foods to do all this. She's getting more fit than she's probably been since uh, having kids. Is that about right? Somewhere in there? Uh, has it been easy? No. Is it worth it? Yes. All right. Um, Wes and Tricia, who usually are sitting back there maybe with my dog or something, they're on a health kick. Um, they are Texans and they are eating veggie burgers. <laughs> Yep, that says a lot, all right. Uh, when I moved to Colorado, uh, I was you know, getting into that little middle-aged thing and getting a, a little bit... I've gained 20 pounds since I've been here, and a bunch of gray hairs here and here. It's your fault. Uh, <laughs> but it's time for me to get off the couch. And so I've been, uh, I've been trying to get off the couch and, and start my way to, to get rid of that and get back to where I should be. And it's, uh, I make a lot of excuses, but I've got to get the work done, right? And anyone, anyone else here doing anything? Is anyone else here working hard to be physically fit or healthy? All right, handfuls of people. Um, you probably know if you're doing that, just like spiritual fitness, uh, you can't do it alone. You need some accountability, you need some help, you need some guidance. Um, so anyone in the church who is really interested in that, if, if, if all you needed was a spark to get a little healthier, uh, talk to me after. We'll try to pair some people up or we'll just all meet on Wednesday morning at the fitness center up there and kind of support ourselves through that. Uh, but that's, that's, that's the physical. Getting leaner, fitter, healthier, stronger, it's hard. I like to eat. I like to eat ice cream. Those are inconsistent things. It is hard to get out of bed in the morning when you want to work out in the morning, when it's cold and you get your hands out there, but no, but you get them right back in. Uh, I, how could, other than that, how could I possibly carve out one more hour in my week to get physically fit? Uh, and I'm not even sure if it makes sense, because I can go running, and all that does is hurt. Uh, I can go biking, which I hate, and apparently that hurts worse. Uh, I can go to yoga, which to me is just obnoxious sometimes. Um, so what's the best way for me to get fit? I don't know. So all, there, I, there's all these barriers, and I put some of them up, and I prop some of them up that are already there. And so the chances are, it's really easy just to skip it. Just skip it. And that's the parable. Because getting spiritually stronger and healthier and more loving and more gentle and more content with our life, that is hard to do. We like to follow our emotions when we're angry, when we're fearful. It's just right there waiting to come out. And how could I possibly commit to becoming a better person when the world is so crazy? It drives me nuts. I'm so busy. How could I ever have time to reflect on this world? Who has time to uh, volunteer somewhere? Who has time to pray or even come to church? You guys do. Uh, I'm not even sure if it makes sense to do this church thing every single week. Maybe I should just read some books in my spare time. Then I'll just put them on the shelf. Or maybe I should, maybe I should, I don't know what I should do. I don't even know what the best way is to get more spiritually healthy. So maybe I'll just go through the motions a little while, and then it would be easy to eh, skip it. There's so many barriers to this faith thing, especially when it comes to church, Big C Church. Uh, some of you, many of you, this is your first time, your first time, your first time, maybe a few others, and um, do you know we're going to pass around a plate later, and some people are going to put money into it? That's kind of weird. Uh, every week, and most of these people go into that room, and they drink coffee, and they talk to each other. Not all of us like to talk to everyone around us. Uh, strangers and such, and one day, Claudia is going to corner you and ask you to help put cookies and do the dishes in there, and that's a lot to, lot to ask, and this guy up here, you're not going to agree with everything I say. I promise you're not going to agree with everything I say, but you know what? There are other people who stand in these kind of places and other churches that are way louder than me, that have way bigger Twitter accounts, and you really don't like what some of them say, right? <laughs> 
You can't possibly believe what the world says church is all about. And why does it have to be on Sunday morning? I mean, this is pretty much my favorite time of the week uh, to sleep in and maybe to go to the mountains. What is the point of doing this thing for an hour? How does this, how does this help my spiritual health? And so there we are, sitting on a little spiritual couch. And maybe we're doing great things on our own. Maybe we are reading good books and, and meditating and all those practices. But for many, many of us, there is this call somewhere inside of us that's not getting answered, not letting it get answered. I want to believe something. I, I want to feel something. I want to understand. I want to grow. I want better for me. I want to be better. I want to live more fully. I want to live without guilt. I want to be stronger with God or the creative or the way or whatever you want to call it. I want to trust that the world is getting better. I want to live convicted. I mean, I sense this thing about the world. There's something that matters in the world, something that just lightens me up in the world. I want to be more in touch with that, but there's so much baggage, so much baggage. There are some things I can get behind, like love and justice and peace, but there's so much that just confuses me. There's so much that sounds ridiculous. There's so much that just disappoints me about some people who do this thing. I wish somehow God could help just clarify all that. I wish I could just get off the couch a little bit and trust that God or something could be there to help me get stronger, even when the exercise of spirituality gets harder. Anyone ever feel that way? I wish there was an easy answer to this whole faith thing. I, I, you have a question. I wish we could just look it up and, and the answer would be right there, clear as could be. You have a problem with how someone's doing church. Okay, let's show them what they're doing wrong. Let's show them how to do it right. I wish it were that simple, the solutions uh, to take down the barriers between you and deep faith. But does God work in simple answers? No. Mm -mm. Hasn't in my life. So even if, if God would help get off the couch and get active with your spiritual journey, I don't think that God or churches should be in the business of easy answers. Responses to the pain and joy of the world? Yes, that's what we are doing here. That's our job. Living deeply together with the mystery of life, deeply together with the mystery of life? Absolutely. That's what these pews are for. Uh, trying to find better ways to be ourselves? Trying to find better ways to be myself? Trying to find better ways to be the world? Yes. But answers? Certainty? Proof? That's not spiritual fitness. That's looking for a machine to do the job of faith for you. Maybe there's some uncertainty in your life and you're okay with that. Maybe there's some unbelief the way that the, the guy in Mary Lou's story. That's okay. Some mystery works for you. Uh, consider it this way. The largest taxi company in the world. Does anyone know what it is? Uber. You know how many taxis they own? Zero. They own zero taxis because they rely on people to share their cars with each other. Most popular media company in the world is Facebook. You know how much media content they produce? Zero, because they rely on us to share our ideas and share our lives. Largest company in the world where you could actually go and get a room to sleep somewhere when you're on a travel. You know what it is? Airbnb. Airbnb. You know how many hotel rooms they own? Zero, because they rely on us to share our homes. What if the largest source of truth in the whole world doesn't have and doesn't need structured certainty? What if the most reliable source of meaning in the whole world has purpose and inspiration and service, but what if it doesn't have all the answers? What if the people of the church shared our stories and shared our lives and shared our hopes and values? What if for the last 2,000 years the world has been running on clarity and belief and knowledge and assurance and finally the world is catching up to what God has been trying to tell us all along. Finally, the church is catching up to what God has been trying to say all along. Leave room for me. It's hard to trust, but that's why trusting God is so valuable. I have a story about a man who, um, uh, who wanted to believe. This is the way Frank sometimes says it. I want to believe, but he couldn't. This guy in the story, he couldn't, he couldn't believe. There were things about the church, there were things about people in the church that drove him uh, away. Gail, has that ever happened to you? Yeah. David, any people in the church ever drive you away? Yeah. 
Yeah, all of us probably. There are things in the church that didn't make sense to this man. Uh, there are things in the church that sounded evil, but he just kept getting pulled uh, here to a place like this. And this isn't the sort of person that society expects to get pulled into a church, which might define many of you in this town. The man is Dan Savage. He's probably best known for, a few years ago, a lot of kids were killing themselves. A lot of kids were killing themselves because of bullying, especially gay kids who were being bullied, and they killed themselves. And Dan Savage created a campaign called It Gets Better. And it was celebrities, many of them gay, who would just tell their story to kids. And the kids would hear that it was hard for me, uh, but it gets better. And you know what? Uh, Kids watch those videos, millions of hits on those videos. And there's no way to quantify it, hope, but the suicide rates actually dropped. There was a tick, and they dropped after Dan did this work. The other thing that Dan Savage is best known for is that he is a sex advice columnist and a rambunctious gay rights advocate, not the normal kind of guy that has a story for a church. There's not many churches that would tell his story, but I have wrestled all over this, and I'm going to trust y'all. I'm going to trust y'all to listen to Dan's story generously. I'm going to trust you to hear that when this story refers to the things about the church that drives him crazy, those might not be the things that drive you crazy. But something might. Something else might be in your heart that pushes you away. Something else might be in your heart that draws you to church. This story is not churchy, and there's even a few bleeps. In case there's kids here, a couple bleeps in this but I trust you to hear something more powerful through the story than the bleeps. The story was recorded 2009, so a lot has changed from then. Uh, There's new laws, there's new pope, there's less stigma in the world. Um, Dan Savage has two main issues that he's going to talk about, about why he gets pushed away from the church. One is homosexuality, and whether you agree with him, disagree with him, that's not the point, so we're going to take our politics, turn it down, take our morality, uh, just hang on to that for a second, and just wonder, what's your issue with the church? Uh, What makes it hard for me to trust God? What makes it hard for me to trust the people who follow God? What has kept me from committing to building a stronger faith? The other thing that uh, really is a struggle for Dan is that his mother was sick and dies. And just like the guy in our scripture, he didn't know what to do about it. He couldn't reconcile a a God of love with a mother who went through that. And so he sought comfort, even in a place that he couldn't understand. Now, I cannot tell you this story uh, for him, so I'm actually going to play it. I'm going to play it, and if you, um, I want you to...